I've been using the iPhone 13 Pro ever since it came out, but I've actually completely switched over to using the Galaxy S22 Ultra for a few months now. And in this video, I'll tell you all of the best and worst parts about making this switch. Okay, so the very first thing that I did after switching over was to customize my phone. And Android is super customizable. You can match all the colors on your phone to any wallpaper of your choice. And this is pretty cool, but what's even better is that in the Galaxy Store on Samsung phones, you can buy a theme. Most are just one to $2, but there are some free ones as well. And then your entire phone is changed. The wallpapers change, your app icons are changed, the colors are changed, always on display is changed, and even this lock screen pattern thing has changed too. And all of this literally just took three seconds. Now, I'm not saying you can't customize iPhones to be all pretty because you certainly can, but it will just take way longer. There's no automatic theme applying thing for iPhone. So I did customize my iPhone, but just take a guess at how long this thing took me. It literally took me over three hours to design this and then also to make these transparent looking app icons, these widgets over here, and also these transparent widgets. If you like this look, you can click on the video over here to get a better look at it. This thing took me way too long. But yeah, customization on Samsung is definitely a whole lot easier and quicker. And honestly, this is a super good thing because if I ever get sick of this theme, I can change it super quickly in just two seconds. Okay, but also, on Android phones. You can put apps and widgets anywhere on the screen. And this should be the standard. This should be the case for every phone. But on the iPhone, everything just has to be right next to each other. Do you want a space between two apps? Nope, that's not happening. Do you wanna place your apps in the bottom right corner so that it will be easier to reach with just one hand? Only if you've already filled up the rest of the screen. I typically put all of the widgets at the top and also the left hand of the screen just so that all of my apps are pushed the right side so that when I'm using it with just one hand, it'll be easier for me to reach the apps. This is a pretty simple workaround, but still feel like it's just kind of ridiculous how iOS still doesn't allow this. All right, but the next pretty big difference that I noticed between these two phones is actually their photo galleries. So on the iPhone, when the view full HDR option is turned on, and it is by default, the iPhone will show the complete dynamic range of the photos. The S20 Ultra doesn't have a feature like this, so I find that the iPhone actually displays some kinds of photos a lot better than the Samsung. Here's a sunset photo that I took. The sun on the iPhone has this one very intensely bright spot, whereas on the Samsung, the entire glow around the sun are all just kind of blown out. However, do note that an iPhone photo will only have this full HDR look when you're viewing it in the photo gallery. After exporting these two photos, you can see they're actually pretty similar in terms of the quality and dynamic range. So even though in reality, these two photos are very, very similar, I definitely still think the photo on the iPhone looks better and more realistic. On the iPhone, you have all of your basic editing tools, which are good, but that's kind of it. Now on the S20 Ultra, there's just a whole lot more going on. So you can remaster a picture, which just automatically tweaks all the things like brightness, contrast, and saturation. I do like to do this, especially on photos that I want to post just to give them like a little more. And when you go to edit your photos, so you do have all your basic editing tools, but you can also draw on the photos. But occasionally I do take a photo of some kind of information and that's when it's nice to be able to just write some additional things on there. And especially with the S Pen, I can be very precise, but I also wanna show you guys some pretty hidden features that I only found out about recently. So if you tap on these three dots down here, you'll see even more options to edit your photos. There's the option eraser, which is great for removing any strangers from your photos or anyone that you don't like anymore. And with the S Pen, I can get super precise with the lines. This is pretty useful for like a quick removal. And there's just one last thing that I want to show you guys in the gallery. So if you make an album, you can actually add a shortcut to this album directly onto your home screen. But yeah, I definitely think since switching over to the S22 Ultra, I've spent way more time in its gallery than I ever did in the iPhones, just because 
there are so many little fun features in there. But before we continue, I would like to thank Ugreen for sponsoring this portion of the video. So this is the Ugreen Nexode 200 watt charger. It has six ports, four USB-C and two USB-A ports and supplies up to 200 watts of power. So this thing can charge up to six devices simultaneously, MacBook, iPad, iPhone, Samsung phone, Nintendo Switch, AirPods, whatever you've got. This charging station also has wide compatibility and can provide fast charging to virtually all USB-C and USB-A devices, from phones to tablets to laptops and more. You can click the link in my description to learn more about this product. But now let's talk about their cameras. So the iPhone's main lens is 12 megapixel, while the S22 Ultra's is 108 megapixel. But actually in the Samsung's camera app, you can switch between 108 megapixel mode and 12 megapixel mode if you do want to save some space. I usually like having the 108 megapixel mode turned on when I'm taking my photos. And I would say quality wise, Samsung and iPhone photos are pretty similar. The big difference is with the color and the vibe. In general, the Samsung photos have more saturation and I think nicer looking colors too. And most of the time, I do like the S22 Ultra's photos more than the iPhones. But the S22 Ultra's video, both the front and the back, are just not as good as the iPhones. One problem is that there are sometimes these weird looking sharpening artifacts. Definitely don't like the look of those, but also as someone who really likes to vlog, it just kind of hurt knowing that for this scene on the iPhone, the sun behind me wouldn't be completely blown out. But yeah, in general, I would say I prefer the photos on the S22 Ultra more, but I do prefer videos from the iPhone more. I have already done a very detailed camera comparison video between these two phones. So if you want to see more of that, you can click right over here. Okay, but the 10 times zoom on the S22 Ultra is a pretty fun feature, especially when I was on vacation and I just wanted to zoom in on things that were very far away. And the photo quality is actually not bad especially after applying some remastering. And I guess a bonus perk of the S22 Ultra is that I can actually press the button on the S Pen to take photos and videos. And this definitely made taking pictures by myself a whole lot easier. On the iPhone, I did use this app called Lens Buddy that also helps with taking pictures by myself. But still, I just feel like the S Pen is more flexible and convenient. I can even switch between taking photos and videos with these air action things, although they're not the most reliable. The only downside I would say taking pictures with an S Pen is that I have to hold it, so I kind of have to be creative about hiding this. Okay, and now I want to talk about the screen experience. So both the S22 Ultra and the iPhone 13 Pro have a 120Hz screen, but the S22 Ultra screen can go brighter than the iPhone screen. Normally when I'm indoors or when I'm just not under very, very bright sun, um, there's really no difference. So I would say the S22 Ultra screen being brighter really only comes in handy during extreme circumstances. However, there are two brightness control features that could be very useful. And the first one, is called extra brightness. Whenever you turn this on, it basically just forces the screen to go the max brightness that it will go. And the second one is the exact opposite feature called extra dim. Basically, when you turn this on, it will just make whatever brightness your screen is at currently just a little bit dimmer. So the S20 Ultra does have a higher resolution than the iPhone 13 Pro, and I do have it set to the highest resolution. But to be honest, there's pretty much no noticeable difference in terms of sharpness between between these two screens. Overall, the S22 Ultra screen is great and I do like it. If there's one thing that I don't like, it would be the curve screen. I just feel like it's so unnecessary. It doesn't really add any benefits. It actually gives it a downside because whenever you have something that has a white or light background, you can see this pretty obvious vignetting effect around the edges. It just looks dark. I feel like the S22 Ultra would be better off with just a normal flat screen. Okay, and the next thing that I want to talk about is navigation because it is a bit different between iOS and Android. So when you're inside an app in iOS, you just have to obey the app's design. If you have to swipe from the left towards the right to return to the previous page, then that's just what you gotta do, even if your phone is literally in danger of falling out of your hands. However, on Android, you actually have this universal back gesture, which is on both sides of the screen and can be used anytime. So if you want to return to the previous 
this page. You can just do a quick swipe from either side and you can override whatever the app design is. And by the way, if you're still using the default three buttons at the bottom, I definitely recommend trying out the gestures. I think they're just a lot more convenient. But yeah, I definitely prefer navigation on Android. It really is the thing that lets me still comfortably use the S20 Ultra, which is a pretty large phone with just one hand. I feel like I wouldn't be able to very comfortably use an iPhone that's this large with just one hand. Okay, and now I want to get into multitasking. So I think the iPhone would be great for multitasking because it has a really fast processor, but iOS really limits what it can do. Now, typically I don't go ham with the multitasking on my phone because when I'm sitting at home, you know, I just use my computer. However, when I'm outside and traveling and I don't have my computer with me, that's when multitasking on phone really comes in handy. So let's say I'm in Miami and I'm feeling a little hungry and I'm thinking, what should I eat? If I pulled out an iPhone, I would have to open up Google, search, find a place, look it up in Google Maps, go back, find another place, and basically just switch back and forth between these two apps. But on the S22 Ultra, I can open up Chrome and Maps in the split screen so I can search for food recommendations, but then also look at their location and menu menu in Google Maps at the same time without having to switch back and forth. Being able to split screen can definitely make things a lot easier. And of course, the pop-up view is pretty useful as well. I sometimes like having YouTube playing in a little pop-up window while scrolling on Instagram or TikTok. Multitasking when I'm on social media. So widgets on Android are interactive. They're not on iOS. The one that I use the most and also my favorite one is the Spotify one. I can play and pause the music and also skip tracks directly from the widget without having to open the app. Definitely wish the iPhone also had interactive widgets. I have more faith in interactive widgets making it into iOS than being able to have a space between two apps. Okay, and as for the S Pen, so I do occasionally use it, definitely not on a daily basis, more so on like a weekly or a special occasion basis. I do sometimes take notes with it and also to write on my screenshots or pictures, but when I'm outside and I really need to remember something, I also like to use the screen off memo feature. So this thing is pretty cool. Your screen doesn't need to be turned on. All you have to do is just pull out the S Pen and then you can start writing directly on the screen. Here, I really needed to remember what time to return the bike, so that's what I wrote down. And after that, you can also pin this to your always on display. And that way, the message or reminder will always be there until you dismiss it. Now, another pretty cool feature that the S22 Ultra has is power sharing. So basically, it can turn into a wireless charger. The iPhone 13 Pro doesn't have any kind of feature like this. So whenever my AirPods die, this power sharing feature is super nice. I can just put my AirPods on top of the S22 Ultra. And after a few minutes of charging, my AirPods are good to go again for a little bit. Now, another Samsung only feature is DeX. And this thing is pretty cool in theory, but I've honestly, I don't really use it. Some of you might have noticed that I actually have DeX on the monitor behind me. So with DeX, you can basically make a desktop with the Samsung phone. But if I had access to a screen, then most likely I have access to a computer as well. And this desktop is nowhere near as functional as like a regular computer desktop or even like an iPad. So yeah, it's just not very useful. It is pretty cool though. So the S22 Ultra does have a better battery life and this is pretty noticeable in everyday use, but this isn't really surprising because the S22 Ultra's battery is just a lot bigger than the iPhone 13 Pro's battery. Okay, and the last thing that I want to talk about is leaving behind the Apple ecosystem when I left behind the iPhone 13 Pro. I do use a MacBook and an iPad on a daily basis, so I did have to leave behind some ecosystem benefits. The things that I relied on the most were AirDrop, having texts and calls sync across my iPhone and the MacBook, and also having a shared clipboard between my phone and laptop. Since switching over to the S22 Ultra, I haven't really found a perfect replacement for those things yet. For AirDrop, I did find this app called AirDroid, and it works pretty well, but it's nowhere near as fast and convenient as AirDrop. Now, I also came across this software called KDE Connect, and it seemed really promising for replacing all of the things and and a lot more, but I just couldn't really get it to work between my MacBook and 
my Samsung. The Android app just seems really bugged and um, yeah, I'm just not really sure what's going on with it right now. But if it does work, then in theory, I'll have access to all of these plugins and that can definitely replace a lot of the Apple ecosystem benefits. Overall, this isn't a huge deal for me, but I do wish that there were better software to better integrate between Android and Apple products. So yeah, that's going to be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it and found it helpful. If you did, you can click on videos over here to watch more from my channel. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and also subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on any of my upcoming videos. Here are the rest of my social media platforms so you can follow me on those other platforms if you would like to. And yeah, that's all that I have to say. I really hope to see you in another one of my videos. Bye!